Hey y'all, you ever find yourself getting into just a negative mood in a dark place? Or maybe you're lacking the motivation, the passion that you really want to have or used to have. So often it's our internal mindset that really determines not only what direction we're heading, but what we achieve and how fast and fervently we can achieve it. If you're sick and tired of just being captured, captured, and captive to your own emotions and feelings, I invite you and encourage you to join me today as together we unlock biblical wisdom for life with a message titled, Mastering Your Mindset. Hey friend, I'm Willie Vaughn and you're listening to Packing Peanuts. This podcast is created by Out of the Box Ministries where we create content, tools, and resources to help you know Jesus, grow spiritually, and succeed in all areas of life. Each week, we bring you these biblical insights and powerful principles to help you live the life that God desires for you to live, for your fulfillment, and so that you can be a light to the world, an impact on the world for good, for God's glory and His kingdom. Packing peanuts, because your soul is a treasure, so the life you pack it in matters. This week, we're going to talk about mindset and the power of mindset. Now, mindset is one of these big topics that's become popular lately. But for me, it's a personal journey, and there's a personal reason for studying this and sharing this with you. Lately, I found myself getting into a a darker place where I was having trouble just having the motivation to get out of bed in the morning. I heard somewhere, I was watching one of the social media things, and they were talking about morning depression. And I wondered if I struggled with that. Now, in my life, I have struggled with depression, and thankfully, I do believe God has healed me from that. I don't go to those deep, dark pits that I used to. But still, there are times when I just don't have the same zeal, the same passion, the same excitement and hope in life that I'd like to. And as I was thinking about that, and I was really realizing how much pain it was causing, because not only would it keep me from getting up and getting my day started, but then that would push everything back, and then things would become overwhelming. And I would be so much into procrastination that I would feel just heavily burdened by all the things that I wanted to do and always feeling like I was getting behind. That, in turn, led to my being a little bit snippy when anyone asked me to do anything, and and it really affected the relationships I had. And so I needed to bring it back to the root cause and started to focus on my mindset. We're going to talk about the three aspects of it. Why mindset is important, how we can assess the root of the problem, and some hacks for improving it. In our time together, we're going to read from Romans chapter 8, verses 5 through 9. But before we get into that, let's have a little fun this week. This week's shout out goes out to a good friend, Ricky. Ricky, God bless you. I hope you and your family, Virginia and the kids are doing well. And I hope this message brings hope and healing to your life. And this week's unsponsor is Sussex Christian School. My son went there for a little while until we moved and we were trying some different things. But Sussex Christian School is really about helping people, helping kids, the next generation, have a anchor in the word of God in a changing world. Focusing on what it says in Proverbs, that the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. You can learn more about this great school at sussexchristianschool.org. And of course, the dad joke for the week. How do cattle keep track of their important dates? With a calendar. All right, enough of that. Let's get into the message for today. want to start off by reading Romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 9. Those who live according to the flesh have their mind set on what the flesh desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their mind set on what the Spirit desires. The mind governed by the flesh is death, but the mind governed by the Spirit is life and peace. The mind governed by the flesh is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those who are in the realm of the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the realm of the flesh, but are in the realm of the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, they do not belong to Christ. Now, of course, I heard this in church, and it really got me to thinking, especially that verse, in that first verse, Romans 8, 5, those who live according to the flesh have their minds set on what the flesh desires. 
And those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. And really, it's the thing in that, that word mindset, that their minds are set. And often our minds are set on something. And really, here it's talking about our, our salvation. It's talking about the spirituality. But it's, I think, goes multi, multi-layered here. Now, obviously, if your mind is set on the things of God, you're going to be thinking about the things of God and thinking about his eternal kingdom. And if your mind is set on your human nature, the things of this world, that's where you're going to be headed. That's where you're going to be pursuing. And that's what you're going to get out of life. But so often, it's our mindset that will determine our direction of where we're heading. And when you think about it, the kingdom of God being righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Spirit, as it says in Romans, that if our mind is set on that kingdom, our mind is set on good things, our mind is set on hope and peace. But here it's saying if the mind is set on the flesh or set on the world or the sinful nature, it cannot please God. And it's going in that direction. When we think about this, it's all about having that mind set. And what does that really mean? That really means what is our focus? What are we thinking about? See, what you focus on, you will fulfill. What you plant, you will harvest. That's exactly what it says in Galatians 5. It says, God will not be mocked. Whatever a man sows, that's what he reaps. Whatever a man plants, that's what he will harvest. That's what he will get out of life. And so it's really thinking about that thought life that we have, where our mind is set, what are the seeds that we are planting in our mind, and how are they growing to a full harvest? What kind of fruit can we expect from those seeds? But what is it about that mindset? And really, I think about it is when we think about our minds being set on the flesh. Really, it's just about whatever you want in the moment. And really, the thing is, if you are fueled by your feelings, you will experience failure. Because I don't know about you, but me, I'm all over the place. I want to do so many different things, and my life is chaos. But I love what it says in 1 Corinthians 14, 33. For God is not a God of disorder, but a God of peace as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. See, in our human nature, we're all over the place. We want this, we want that, we're running here, we're running there. But God is a God of order. That's why following after Jesus is a life of discipline. And when you start to have that discipline, you can have a discipline to set your mind on the right things. But if you don't set your own mind, it will wander all over the place. They say you try to get your ducks in a row, and sometimes it feels like it's more like herding cats or nailing jello to a tree. But really, when we set our mind, we are deciding ahead of time what we're going to think about, what we're going to plant and the seeds that we're going to have in our mind. And we're going to have order and intentionality to it. If you just let your day happen, it will fall apart. It will go all over the place. But if you have a mindset on what you want to accomplish, where you want to go, you will have focus and you will have direction and you will start to experience peace. As it says, God is a God of peace, not of chaos. But so often we have this bad mindset because our lives are full of chaos. And so we need to set our minds and take control. But the beautiful thing is we do have agency. Guess what? You can decide what you will think about. In Colossians 3, 1 and 2, it says this, since then you have been raised with Christ, set your heart on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God and set your mind on things above, not on earthly things. We can set our heart. We can set our mind. We can do that. You see, so often we end up reacting to the things around us because we haven't set our mind, that our emotions, our mind, our heart, our soul are just like a thermometer, that they are reacting to the world around us. We're just showing the temperature of our circumstances. But instead, we have the ability of setting our minds like a thermostat, saying, this is what I'm going to do. This is how I'm going to respond. Thinking of that ahead of time, thinking about things that are higher, thinking about things that are greater, setting our heart and our mind on the right things. In 2 Corinthians 10.5, it says this, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. We take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. And I think that's really where it starts, is taking captive our thoughts, having our minds set, saying when a thought pops into your head, now maybe you can't control all the random thoughts, but you can say, nope, 
I'm going to not dwell on that. I'm going to focus on something else instead. And so having that mindset is predetermining where you're going to turn that thermostat to, predetermining what you're going to allow yourself to think about and dwell on, and predetermining and setting it in the right place. When we learn to take that agency, we start to take control. And the beauty of that is when we start to take control, when we start to exercise self-control, which is one of the fruit of the spirit in Galatians 6, says that fruit of the spirit is self-control. When we exercise that, we will stop feeling overwhelmed. We will start, start feeling like we are in control. And sometimes that's just what we need to feel like we do. Okay. We do have some control. Now, listen, you don't have control over everything in life, but you do have some control, which is exactly what this is talking about. Re controlling and determining ahead of time how you will respond rather than waiting for the moment to come and then just reacting in the moment. That's what mindset is about. But in order to do that, we have to first really dig down into the root of the issue, the root of the problem and figure out what is our mindset. We need to be aware of who we are, what we're thinking, what the thoughts are that are in our lives. In Luke 6, 45, it's Jesus says this, a good man brings good things out of the good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of the good stored up in their heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now here's really sometimes we need to stop, slow down, and kind of get outside of ourselves a little bit. Start to watch ourselves, look at ourselves. Get out of the box of your own little person and think about and listen to the words that you're saying. Think about how you're talking. Sometimes we end up saying things and we don't realize, wait, that came out wrong. Or sometimes we say things and we don't even realize what we're saying. What, what is your self-talk like? How are you talking to yourself? Often in our mindset, we can try to be nice to other people, but we're our own worst critic or we're our own worst enemy. So thinking about what are the kind of things that you are saying, because those will reveal what is really in your heart. And when we can do that, we then can get an idea of assessing ourselves and saying, okay, where am I at? And that's really the starting point for cha making any changes. But also I think about this as like a computer program that we're going in hitting that little button that says settings and then scrolling through and saying, okay, what are the issues that we're facing? And we can see that what our negativity will be revealed in our words, in our conversation. But then maybe sometimes we need to go a little deeper than just acknowledging it ourselves and we need to get tech support involved. And when I say tech support, I'm talking about God, the Holy Spirit, or at least someone outside of our own person and saying, hey, listen, I, I'm struggling with something and I don't even know what the root of the problem is and saying, can you help me with that? Psalm 139, 23 and 24, David says, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts or test me and know my thoughts and see if there is any wicked way within me and lead me in the way everlasting. And so sometimes we need to get outside of ourselves and say, hey, you know what? What's going on inside of me? Asking God, God, what do you see? Asking the Holy Spirit, search me, test me, look inside my heart. Or at the very least, asking people around you, hey, have you noticed anything going on? Can you tell me what you think my issue is or my problems might be? Now, they might not always know what's going on internally, but at least they can start to get the conversation rolling and get some ideas and you can start to address the problem. But then we need to really, once we've started to address the problem of what our heart is thinking, what our heart is dwelling on, what our thoughts that we're having, the, the words that we're speaking over our lives that are affecting that mindset, then we need to start applying certain things. And I love it. The Bible doesn't just say, hey, be better, but it teaches us how to. I remember early on in my marriage, I went to therapy and I felt just totally useless because I would say, this is what I'm feeling. This is how I'm acting. And the counselor would just say, well, don't do that. I'm like, duh, I know that. The reason I'm here is because I need help overcoming that. And God is that comforter. God is that counselor. And he gives us the process by which we can overcome and learn how to set our mindset. For one, we have to be mindful of our influences. You know, what is influencing us? Listen, if you're spending all your time in, in negative social media or watching negative TV shows or even just watching the news, which is all bad, that it's going to affect your mindset. If you're around people who are always grumbling 
grumbling and complaining or gossiping, guess what? That's going to affect your mindset. You can't have a fish swimming in toxic water and think it's going to be healthy. We can't have our minds soaking up negativity constantly and think we're going to have a good mindset. 1 Corinthians 15.33 says this, Do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. And so listen, what we, what we allow to influence ourselves will affect us. So some, start thinking about where are you spending your time? What are you listening to? What are you watching? I know people sometimes want to stay you know, informed about all that's going on, and I'm not against that. But if you spend all day long listening to talk radio, watching the news, and listening to people's commentaries, you're going to have this negative mindset. You're really going to be set on a certain way of thinking. Give yourself space. Give yourself time to be uplifted, maybe listening to worship, having good conversation, reading the scripture, or just reading a good book, something that's going to lift you up. Maybe listening to comedy, things that are going to build you up. Make sure you have that, that you have the influences in your life that are going to be uplifting, raising, raising you to a higher level. Set your mind and set the, the station of whatever it is you're listening to, at least some of the time. You'll notice that when you start doing that, you'll start to feel better and feel more motivated. There's actually a Christian radio station, I'm going to start 99.1, that does a challenge. It says, listen for 30 days and see if it doesn't improve your mood. Listening to Christian music for 30 days instead of anything else and see if it doesn't improve your mindset, improve your mood, improve your motivation. But also, we need to learn to dwell on the good. This is where taking every thought captive really comes into play. Listen, you will have random thoughts come at you, but you can choose whether to say, nope, I'm not going to think about that, or yes, I will dwell on that. Philippians 4, 8 says this, Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Listen, maybe it's starting out and saying, I'm going to set my mind to those things. Writing out a list of these are the things that I'm thankful for. These are the things that are good in life. And start thinking about that. Don't wait for the, the ideas to pop into your head on what to think about. But instead, ahead of time, saying, these are the things I'm going to focus on. These are the things I'm going to dwell on. There's so much research out there about the power of being thankful, of giving thanks, of just starting your day with gratitude. When you start your day with gratitude, and some people even use a gratitude journal, writing down three to five things every morning, that's a way of setting your mind to start thinking about the good things, the pure things, the noble, the excellent and the praiseworthy things, things that are admirable. You do have good things in your life. So you need to set your mind and start looking at those things and it'll start to improve who you are. And that, of course that leads us to being thankful, the power of thankfulness. Thessalonians 5.18 says, Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And we need to do that. But also control our external. You know, you know sometimes you need to just shut up. We need to shut ourselves up. In Philippians 2.14 says, do everything without grumbling or complaining or grumbling or arguing. Start saying, you know what? I'm not going to complain about this. I'm not going to. Now, I'm not saying that one morning you wake up and say, listen, I'm not going to grumble anymore. I'm not going to complain anymore. And that's it. But you can make a decision. I'm going to start stop myself from complaining. I'm going to stop myself from grumbling. And if you make that intentional decision, you make that choice, you write it down, you say, that's where I'm going to set myself. If with practice, you can find yourself more and more saying, when you get into that, that position where you want to complain, you want to grumble, saying, you know what? I've decided I'm not going to do that, so I'm going to stop that right now. And when you start to do that, when you start to eliminate the grumbling and the complaining, you start to focus on things to be thankful for, and you start to make sure you're putting yourself in a good place, you will see your mindset improve. You will see your motivation improve, your passion and zeal for life, and your overall joy will increase. And then you'll be able to do and live the exciting life that God has for you. If you would like to improve your mindset, I've actually created a short prayer to pray to add to your morning routine. And if you want to learn more about that, you can at outofthebox.org. That's O-U-T-A, the box, all one word, dot org slash mindset. Well, our friend, I want to thank you for joining me today. I hope that this message has inspired, challenged, encouraged, and equipped you to live the life that God wants for you to live. If you could do me a favor and rate and review this podcast, I that would greatly appreciate it. It would help us reach other people with this content. And until next time, remember, Jesus loves you.
and so do I. <laughs>